I know what you're thinking. What in the gosh darn is Bits and Bombs? Bits and Bombs is a podcast deep diving into what it takes to do stand-up from a different comedian every episode. Follow new open micer Peter Doms in his journey to be an okay comic. Neiman Naz. Thanks for coming on today. Peter Doms. <laughs> is it Doms? Yes. Yeah. If I pronounce it right. Yeah, absolutely. Most wow. people say Dams straight off the nah, bat. Nah, man, because there's an H in there. You gotta yep. add a little bit of spice on the on the on the ah, uh, you know? The ah. Uh. A Doms. Yeah. Doms, yeah. Thanks yeah. for having me. No worries. First international guest as well. Oh really? Yep. Uh, all of them have been Aussie? Yep, all of them have wow. been Aussie so far. And I've done like uh twenty this will be episode twenty nine. So Oh, that's my age. Oh, straight on the Wow, <laughs> this guy's good. Yeah. Shout out to this guy. He knows I what he's doing. Plan things to the T. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. Great start. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> so when was your first gig? Like first open mic gig? Uh it was September sixteenth, two thousand and fifteen. Two thousand fifteen. So yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, almost 10 years ago. Yeah, almost 10. Wait. No, nine years. Almost nine years ago. And was that just like an open mic? Oh, yeah. It was a it was a just terrible place. Yeah. It was a third floor of a random shitty bar that was already like cracked. The, the floor was cracking. The third floor was cracking. Oh, Jesus. It was like wooden and like there's cracks in the ground and fucking... There's other 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 like the worst comedians in the, in the city would go to this one place and just yep. do open mic spots and talk about nothing, just to get material out. But yeah, that was my first time. There's always that one open mic that all the the people that say also just like to straight up just say horrendous shit as well without it being really oh yeah a that's joke either as well. That's the the open mic charm, right? That's every open mic. Yeah, to be honest. <laughs> so how did that first gig go? Oh man, it was it was it was fine. I mean like it. There's no one. I, by the time I went up, I was like 30th on the list. Mm-hmm. There was 30 people. Oh Jesus! I yeah. waited like three hours. Um, I was yeah. There was only me and then the host, the other comic, uh-huh. and then one other guy too. And like none of them were paying attention, obviously. Yeah. Because that's how it works. And yeah, um, I was obviously detrimentally nervous as well. I almost shit my pants. Uh, but I I was supposed to do five no four minutes. I only did two. Mm-hmm. But I was reading off my book the entire time. But like you know, it's my first time so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah and from there like did you ha- did you already plan to like start doing a few or you like was it more like a bucket list list item for you yeah no I, I, as soon as i did it as bad as it was yeah it was such a rush yeah i was like holy fuck this, this feels amazing and then that's when i was like all right like, how many more can i do this week and then just, i just that's when i started to get on it yeah from the jump yeah sweet how'd you so how did like the next gig like the second, the next few gigs kind of go for you. Um, it's pretty much the same. Like maybe yeah. even worse. It was just all crap. Yep. For like three years straight. Oh yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's like because you know, I, I, it takes time. It takes time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It takes a couple of years at least to get like decent. Mm-hmm. But yeah, to build up the material, like yeah, the, the first whole year, you, the first two year or two was just me getting comfortable on stage. Yep. That was the that was all the practice was for. Like my material was garbage mm-hmm. and like, I don't know, whatever. It was like decent, like it was a random couple of jokes that were funny here and there. But mm-hmm. for the most part, it's about just like getting comfortable on stage. That's, that's what, what mainly the purpose was yep. for the first two years. But yeah. Yeah. That's what I try and tell. Like, that's what I've found myself. And I feel like I've changed that mindset recently with open mics. Like the ones where there's like one or two people in the crowd. I'm like, well, that's actually a place I can practice being on stage and with a microphone. Mm. So like I've been using that to just get comfortable and i feel like now i'm going to like the rooms where there is people and the room runner's like oh my god you're so much better now so like it's putting that effort into practicing and just getting comfortable will show yeah like later on yeah yeah exactly it's it's the reps that matter man Mm -hmm. i just i just i just care about the reps at all times you can't cheat the reps you know Mm -hmm. like you it'll show if you haven't been on stage like a thousand times versus a hundred so that's I think that's the most important part at least for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, so cool. yeah. And after so, at what point did you start to like get like you know paid spots and pick up like the gigs that weren't so much like the open mic? Um, uh, paid spots. I, I got. I think. I think the first time I got paid was like end of end of my second year in comedy I'd, mm-hmm. I'd say or middle midway through 
yeah. at a random like independently booked show it was like 20 bucks but it was a fucking 20 dollars to go up there for five minutes and tell jokes to yep. random people i was like this is amazing yep and yeah. at least like you're not out of pocket for like getting there as well barely i mean <laughs> yeah. still losing money yeah yeah still losing money <laughs> lost yeah, a yeah. lot of money in those first few years but yeah absolutely <laughs> but i mean you know it, it was just a, it was just the beginning it was the, it was the foundation for later and yeah mm-hmm. it was it was cool it was interesting yeah yeah sweet so then like in the like the fourth year you start to like pick up the material that you started to fig like realize or like after the second year that's when the material started to like kind of work for you as well uh i don't know if it was working it was just yeah. like I, I finally had something like yeah. a, of a set five seven maybe ten minutes mm-hmm. that was when i started to like really um have a set but it was like still the jokes still like weren't strong as like they are now compared to now yeah and even now like obviously there's so much work i need to do on, on my own material all the time but mm. but yeah like at that point yeah um it was like yeah the, I, I had probably like five to seven minutes of proper material mm-hmm. but like yeah, i could do 10 15 after four or five years yeah but yeah that's typically how it goes i think mm-hmm. at, yeah. what, at what point along uh in your career where have you like started doing like your own solo shows and things like that um I, I never did I never headlined like l- my own show until like um I'd say after the pandemic it was like 2022 yeah just before I went on tour for the first time mm-hmm. so that was like what um pretty much s- seven eight years in by that point mm-hmm. um that was but that was also like at the time I was building audience online so it was yeah. a little bit different because I got you know the, I sold tickets to people who followed me online to mm-hmm. come see me live but Nonetheless, that was the first time I sold did, did my own headline show, but I've headlined on other people's shows like a couple of years prior to that too. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, yeah, awesome. Mm. When so, uh, when did you start doing? So like, how I found you was through Gary V. Oh really? Yeah, oh, that's yeah. funny. So uh, he was <laughs> content. It, yeah, <laughs> it was you and uh, tr- uh, Trevor Wallace. Um, oh, like in the, the on the podcast? In the, in, on the pod, yeah, he was you like talking, talking about us. Yeah, he was yeah, talking yeah. about you guys. Yeah, yeah me and Trevor Wallace. Yeah. yeah, that's how I found him as well. Trevor. Oh, okay, yeah. nice, cool. Yeah, yeah, so that was cool. Yeah. So when did you start doing like on t- online content and stuff? Oh, uh, from the very beginning as well. Very beginning. Yeah, yeah. yeah same time I started doing comedy, like stand up, mm-hmm. and you know, sketch acting, all that stuff. Like yeah. I started doing content as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I start. I started. Actually, I started content technically a little bit earlier than I did stand up because like. I dropped out of school in 2014, mm-hmm. at the beginning of 2014, and then November of 2014, I started making YouTube videos. Yeah, and then in 2015, that's when I started doing stand-up, and like I went to comedy school. There's a uh, comedy program in where I'm from in Canada, and no, uh, yeah. So, okay. what's what does the comedy program consist of? Is that like a stand-up, p- or is that more for like writing? Like what type? Everything, of everything. Yeah. It had it had everything. They had uh um you know it was physical comedy courses improv Mm -hmm. acting sketch writing Mm -hmm. tv writing stand-up class yeah and um yeah i think that's it so everything they taught you everything yeah it was was, and it was like the teachers were just like ex comedians were like Mm -hmm. not really working anymore but like they still did comedy for a while so Mm -hmm. you know they're just teaching amateurs like me the basics at least the fundamentals so Mm -hmm. yeah it was cool it was great i got a lot out of it yeah, sweet. And what was that? Did you do the gig before? Um, oh uh, no, no. It was it was two weeks after I started the program. Oh yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Because that's sweet. when I started to learn about stand up, and yep. then like uh, now, then I was like, oh, okay, I can take this information and whatever knowledge I just learned in these two weeks to just get out there and just start doing open mics on my own. That's because cool. that's, that's what they were encouraging to do. Like they're not going to do it for you, right? Yep. Like stand up, you just have to, it's all on your own. So oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, because we have over here, like, we have a few courses and stuff mm. that might do, like, over a few weeks or, like, have a few, like, uh, weekend kind of sessions. Mm. And then at the end of the month, they'll have, like, a a graduation show where, yeah. like, you get your friends to come and watch. And that's when they experience it for the first time. Yeah, yeah. They have that, too, in, in Toronto, where I'm from. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called Second City. Yeah. They have – it's it's more so, like, the, the program I did was an actual, like, uh, college program mm-hmm. for, like, two years. Straight. Oh wow! I, I got yeah. a diploma for it for comedy. Oh, cool. It was hilarious. <laughs> uh, clown college, you know. Yeah. Um, but like, 
what you're talking about, we also had that on the side. Like Second yeah. City was like a um, a training center for doing comedy courses, just like individual ones. Mm-hmm. So like you just just sign up and just do stand up, yeah. or just do sketch writing or whatever. So and then at the at the end of the course, like after like six weeks or so, mm-hmm. um, everyone would go up and do five minutes of material. And yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. With with your with your diploma, was there like any kind of like assessments where it had to be like performing? live and things like that or you just kind of had to seek that yourself um no they didn't really force you to do it but actually in a way they did they so um my program was actually associated with a comedy club in toronto Mm -hmm. uh it's called yuck yucks and um they had their own night on tuesday nights Mm -hmm. Uh, it was called a humber humber comedy it was the name of the college humber humber Mm -hmm. college humber comedy nights was a thing in toronto on tuesday nights at 7 p.m for the students to mm-hmm. go up and do like two minutes of material mm-hmm. in front of like nobody like yeah. like sometimes people would come in and like there'd be 20 people and you're like you're actually new but then you have audience so they would encourage you to do they actually made you do at least one or two every month or so mm-hmm. i think yeah um but then like i was like yo every week sign me up yeah like I, some people didn't want to do it at all some people yeah, are like wow. oh i'll just do one like i'm too nervous like i don't like stand because some people went into the program not really wanting to do stand-up yeah. they more so were writers or like mm-hmm. they're sketch comedians and stuff but so yeah but yeah it was good yeah cool yeah. It, is, it is funny how like um the barrier for a lot of people is just the public speaking even though like they might be like really good at writing jokes they're just like no nah, i'm not gonna yeah. Subject myself to the public speaking side of things. Yeah. And people, that's the freedom of, of that program is you mm-hmm. can do whatever you want, mm-hmm. but like you still have to do the courses that are like, every, you have to show up to the classes yeah. every day, but you don't have to go out and perform mm-hmm. if you don't want to. You, they'll, they'll still do assignments within the classroom that you have to perform in front of the class, mm-hmm. but they don't, they didn't like force you to go perform at like clubs or open mics. That was all just on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, like, honestly, me and, like, three other people were the only ones doing that out of, like, the 60 people. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, and other, other ones, they did stand up, but, like, they just weren't hustling. Yeah. But, like, me and three other people were hustlers. We were, like, every night we're out. Yeah. On top of doing the school during the day and the comedy, whatever assignments we we're doing. Yeah. As soon as it finished, we all catch, like, like you know, the buses or the, the, the trams and go to the city, do the open mics, and then go home late at night, rinse and repeat every day. Yeah. What's the open mic scene like in Toronto? Um, honestly, man, I don't know. At this yeah. point, I've been out of that scene for yeah. like five years at yeah. this point, uh-huh. including the pandemic, I guess. But um, I'm sh- it's, apparently, it's m- there's much less opportunities and much less rooms than before when I started. Mm. There was tons when I started. Yeah. Every night, you could do three or four sets. Oh, shit. Easily. Yeah, that's crazy. And all within like decent air- like yeah. travel time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I don't think it's as, as strong anymore. Yeah, you you've spent a bit of time here in Australia, so you'd understand that like the that's pretty like there's not as much of an open mic scene. No, over here like t- to hear like when people from America and things like that in other yeah. countries say like, oh, I could do like three or four a night easy. Like that's the fucking dream to me to be able to. Get oh the, really? Yeah, get those amount of reps in. Like, how many can you do in Australia? Like you think? I mean, like in Brisbane, how how, how many do you think you can do? For me. I mean, to be fair, I don't drive, so I'm kind of limited oh, to, like, yeah, you know, public you. transport yeah, and you. things like that. But, like, I, I've been doing, like, average three a week, kind of. Okay. Three, four a week. It's not bad. Mm-hmm. But, like, how many, if you wanted to, what's, like, the best case scenario? How many sets could you do in a week in Brisbane for, like, someone who can, like, just get all the spots? Uh, there's some people that are doing, like, probably eight to ten. Mm. Yeah, but they're also, like... It's not just Brisbane, like they're traveling to like Gold Coast. Oh, so they're they're traveling to like sort of get those kind of gigs. You'd have to be traveling to like, and I still do it. I do that as well. I travel to like Sunshine Coast, Mm. like an hour, two hours away. Right. Um, So that's where like, you know, some nights you might be just doing that one gig and that's your whole night done. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, I've been there. I've done that. I've done that many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's the grind. That's the hustle. Mm -hmm. You got to love it. Otherwise, it'll drive you crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, when did when about did you come to Australia? It was like was it beginning of this year or end of last year that you? Yeah, it was it was beginning of this year, beginning of twenty twenty four. It was New Year's Day. We we're in the air actually when New Year's happened. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, since January first. And you've moved here temporarily, hey? Temporarily, yeah, yep. just for the year. Yeah, we're on a working holiday visa. My brother yep. and I. I'm with my brother, and yeah, uh, we, yeah, it was just. 
it's it's cool it's cool i've never been this i've never been so far away from home for this long so it's, yeah it's nice and what made the what what made you choose australia out of all the places to try stand up uh it's a, I, it's a little um complicated because well we were supposed to go to the u.s yep. to do more comedy because mm-hmm. i have a lot of opportunities down there but you have to get a visa to work there yep. right yeah. And it's so hard to get a visa. Our visas got rejected like four times. Yeah. Within a span of like eight months. And so I like ultimately like end of November of 2023, we got our last rejection for the U.S. And then we were like, mm-hmm. fuck, man. Like, because the reason why we wanted to go to the U.S. and do because yeah. I, w- I wanted to get a bunch of stage time to practice for the tour I'm doing next year in 2025. Yeah. And I needed somewhere like a home base or like somewhere different than Toronto in Canada where I can practice my sets and do my material. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, I don't give away a lot of my material to, like, the fans that, that know me. Because, like, a yeah. lot of my fan base is in Canada. Mm-hmm. And obviously in America, too. But, like, mm-hmm. America is so much bigger than Canada is. That, like, most like, most likely people wouldn't even, like, see me mm-hmm. if I dropped into certain random places. So, but Toronto, if I were to stay in Toronto, like, a lot of people would know me at the shows. And, like, I don't want them to see the material while I'm working on it. Because I want those same people to buy tickets to the tour show. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. we're like, all right, well, if we can't get into the U.S., what's next? We thought of U.K., but U.K. also is a little bit tougher to stay for a long period mm-hmm. of time, for like a year. But Australia, you could do a whole year, and it's much cheaper. Mm-hmm. We paid $500, did the application within five minutes. A minute later, we both got accepted. Oh, and we're so like, all right, well, then fucking this is it. This is the sign. So... And then, well, also what helped was I've been to Australia before and I made connections with a couple other comedians, um, you know, Joe White and Ashley Fizame. They're from um, Melbourne. Yeah. I don't know if they're from Melbourne, but um, I met them in Perth last time I was I was in Australia and they pretty much are like at the top of their game too, like within the country. And like they said that there's a lot of stage time here for me and they could help they could help out a lot and so i was like yeah fuck it man like it's uh, all the signs are leading towards australia mm-hmm. and melbourne specifically because it's like one of the more livable cities i'd say in australia mm-hmm. and a lot more stage time so um yeah that's what i needed right so i was like fuck it let's go to melbourne and then yeah ever since like we've just been bouncing around like i've been to adelaide perth brisbane obviously a couple times sydney a couple times um gold coast uh i was supposed to go to sunshine coast um, we're going to Cairns, so yeah. yeah, just all over. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. We Brisbane has a, and I'm curious your thoughts on this. Brisbane has a reputation for having like the toughest crowds in no. the country. No, no, I completely disagree. I think it's the complete opposite of that. I oh, think really? Melbourne's the hardest. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because I and I've I can probably confidently like there's there's some validity here because mm-hmm. I've performed a lot in each of the cities at this point. Yep. Yeah, yeah. This past like six seven months, by far. By far, Brisbane's my favorite oh, in wow. terms of audience. Yeah, they're the best crowds, in my opinion. And Melbourne's the worst. <laughs> okay. And Sydney a little bit. Sydney's not bad. Sydney's pretty good in pockets, but some parts are still. It's kind of like Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Melbourne overall is not great, in my opinion. Yeah. But once again, that's just generalizing. Some pockets or some suburbs are amazing, mm-hmm. but overall, I generally, I'd say yeah, Brisbane is is the best from my experience. Yeah, sick. I feel like the crowds get here quite like get quite loose here as well like yeah yeah a lot of people are on the drink and stuff um, well not even the, that they're just they're just more they're less woke i think here oh yeah absolutely so it's like you can kind of get away with different jokes more often yeah that's what i found but yep. yeah i know melbourne definitely has like the woke reputation oh yeah yeah big time yeah oh man i've done at this point hundreds of sets in melbourne and maybe 10 of them were good mm-hmm. like in front of audience uh, every other time I've bombed completely like oh. they're, they're just staring at me like I just killed their family <laughs> I'm just doing jokes it's Jesus. wild like certain jokes I know would hit somewhere else yeah completely flat in Melbourne oh shit yeah okay yeah yeah interesting I yeah okay good luck in Melbourne <laughs> <laughs> yeah I've never done that I've done Sydney and that was fun yeah. that was a bit of fun mm. Sydney's good yeah mm. yeah because I'm in a similar boat where like I kind of like I'm still in the open mic kind of stage. Yeah. Of, like I'm doing comedy for two years. Okay. Yeah. And you're like, you're su- you're super new. Yeah. Yeah. And I I kind of want to like while I'm young like I'm 27. Okay. So yeah, I like so I, yeah. I want to like travel a bit. Mm-hmm. Um and like America is like appealing as well, but it's like the visa thing. Yeah. It's, where it's, it's just tough. insane. Like I'll probably just have to do like a holiday or something there. Yeah. 
because I just want to be somewhere where I can just do like four or five gigs a night and just oh, get yeah. the repetitions in yeah. very quickly. Yeah. So I thought UK is pretty good for yeah. um, rep- like getting the reps in as well. Mm-hmm. Like they have quite a big scene there. So yeah, Melbourne. Ha- I'll give Melbourne that. Melbourne has the most stage time. Yeah. You can find the most stage time. So I think if you wanted to do that, I would, I would say do that. But other than that, yeah, man, it's good. It's good. It's good to travel around. Like I, I highly recommend any comedian to do that earlier on. That's what I started doing after like four years. Yeah. And it helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. It immensely changed my whole experience with comedy. Um, because I feel like there's a lot of comedians who stay local yep. and never leave this one area. And then their jokes become all about local jokes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And then it becomes one minded and one sided. And then like, they just never outgrow that. Mm. I think if you want to grow out to be a bigger comedian and, you know, resonate with a lot more people, mm-hmm. you have to travel. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's where, like, I feel like um, that's why I'm trying to make, like, the effort to go to Sydney and things like that. And, like, at least you get to, like, also meet the other comedians in the scene mm-hmm. around the country and things like that, too. Definitely. So, and it is that, like, each each town and city has their own type of crowds. Like even like if you go like to North Queensland, like mm-hmm. they're even looser. They're even oh, like yeah. less into the, I bet. like less woke and things like that. They don't that. give a shit over there. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, that's where all the uh, fucking bogans are in the yeah. tradies. Yeah. Absolutely. Bogans. The fucking bogans. <laughs> I love saying that. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite Aussie uh, slang term? Slang term you've oh, heard so man. far. There's too many, but yeah. um, Heaps. 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 Someone said, to, like, so I have, like, a housemate that's from Slovenia. Okay. And he was, like, he also said that heaps is a yeah. crazy. And I was, like, I didn't even think of it as, like, a Aussie thing. Aussie thing. Oh, it's yeah. completely an Aussie thing. No one yeah. else uses heaps anywhere. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, every, I had no idea. Every, every single person I know who isn't Australian says the same thing, too, I think. Mm-hmm. Heaps are, like, you know, easy as. Easy as. They're too easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no worries. No, I mean, no worries is anyone says that, but you guys say no worries a lot. Or no dramas. Oh, I say no worries all the time. No dramas. Yeah, no no dramas, dramas, mate. Yeah. Uh, obviously the C word, you know, saying yeah. can't, you know. Um, it's, classic. it's classic. It's like saying bro. It's crazy. Yeah, we use it so just like. It's so casual. It's kind of like that that saying. It's like, uh, call your mates cunts and cunts mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Have you heard? It's your mate. It's your mate. Your mate. Yeah, yeah. Your mate. <laughs> oh, mate. Have you heard uh, not here to fuck spiders? I have. Yeah, yeah, that means like what? Not to like, to not here to fuck around. No fuck around. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And what about the fucking drop bears? Oh yeah, drop everyone's bear. trying to fuck with me the first week I got there. Like, yeah. yo, I read the drop bears. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is a drop bear? Yeah. And yeah. I just Google it and I'm like, it's it's a fucking scam, obviously. But yeah, I was fucking with my uh, housemate. Uh, yeah, recently about the drop bears as well. And I was watching like the Mad Max movie. I'm like, oh, this is a documentary, bro. This happened. In real uh. life. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, bro, really? Yeah, like, yeah, no, no, no. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you got to tell them. You got to tell them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say all those. Um, there's probably more. Um, I, I also liked when you put the O at the end of some words. Like fucking servo and like yeah. bottle O. It's like E and O. Like we, yeah. Rich, like a guy named Rich. Rich O. Yeah. Rich O. Or fucking. like my last name that people like just automatically call me Darmsy. Dama. Oh, Darmsy, yeah. Darmsy. See, it's funny because being Canadian... Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of hockey players in yeah. Canada, they do that. Okay. They'll, like, I have a hockey character, literally, that I do content with online. It's yeah. His name, like, the name is Travis Carter, but then I always call him Cartsy. Yeah. It's a very Canadian thing as well. Kind of like oh. you do the Z, like the Y at the end of the, the name. Yeah. We do the same thing. It's like, people would call, like, my name's Nima. People would always call me Nimzy growing up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's very similar. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What was the first country you traveled to for comedy um like outside of canada yeah, obviously outside, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah first country i've traveled to for comedy uh i think it was yeah it was perth oh wow like australia, australia. Yeah. yeah 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 i've heard perth crowds are similar to here as well like perth is pretty good too i've had yeah. i like the perth crowds yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Well, and any other countries beside Australia or? Um, well, it, that was the first one. Yep. And yeah. And then, the first one, um, yep. yeah, after, th- oh, after I actually went to Berlin, yep. like Germany, did comedy there. And I think that's it. After that, it was like pretty much Canada, US, a bunch. And then, mm-hmm. yeah. 
I haven't been anywhere else. But yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. Cool. To do comedy. I've been a lot of different places mm-hmm. in general, but I haven't done comedy in all those places. But a lot in the US. A lot in the US. Just like under the radar for now. But yep. until my visas get approved. But mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, sweet. Do you have any other like I th- I think I've seen online that you have a few other country countries like planned for dates and things yeah. like that for shows yeah yeah, yeah. um well we haven't released the tourist uh yet but mm-hmm. we're obviously going to do canada u.s australia again oh sick uh cool. the end of the tour like it'll be end of yep. 2026 yeah um and then middle east so like yeah. dubai abu dhabi yep. um bahrain mm-hmm. and potentially like uh saudi arabia or kuwait mm-hmm. one of those ones um and then, oh, you know, Europe, a bunch of European cities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, right. World, worldwide this time. Last tour I did was just Canada and, like, a few American cities, but, mm-hmm. but like, they were just, you know, just previews. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, cool. And so that's, yeah, obviously the show you're working on in Australia here at the moment is the is the tour for next year. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, like, working on the, the whole tour set of, like, yeah, mm-hmm. for the tour, yeah. Um, I've done a couple of pop-ups. Obviously, you were at my show mm-hmm. in Brisbane last time. Um, that was like half of that's like still new material, and like I'm just trying to like work through it. But yeah, um, yeah, it's uh, it's a work in progress, and just trying to build pretty much like a tight 45 minutes, mm-hmm. and then include crowd work into it. So it's like it'll be probably an hour set total. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, it's been going great. Like I've done the most sets of my life being in australia oh really that's in, a, in a short period of time it's the most i've ever done yeah i'm at like i think i'm at like uh almost 400 sets oh, shit. since the beginning of this year yeah because like including like perth fringe adelaide fringe melbourne fringe like festival um and then all of my own shows like other bouncing around doing other spots across the country so mm-hmm. yeah it's good yeah yeah cool mm-hmm. yeah do you have any advice for up and coming like new like open mic comedians like when they first start out oh yeah yeah i'd say it's uh I, like i said before the reps matter more than anything yeah at the beginning mm-hmm. you shouldn't even worry about what your material is about until two years in mm-hmm. just fucking do whatever find your voice and then worry about like oh i want to talk about this just like talk about everything at first mm-hmm. but try to talk about things at least that's funny to you ultimately mm-hmm. um and that's authentically you yeah and don't try to be someone else mm-hmm. i think that would be the biggest thing i'd say and just get on stage as much as possible the same thing amir k he's a comedian in uh, la and he's one of my favorites and we're friends now um he told me that when i first started and it really still resonates to me to this day mm-hmm. it resonates with me to this day and um i highly recommend that to everybody too yeah, I think yeah, I've I've stressed out for that's actually really good advice because even like in my first two years, I was stressing for a long time, being like, I haven't found my voice yet. Like, what am I? Right, right. Like, who am I? And like, like what is like material going to be? Where I feel like it, yeah, you just kind of just have to get the reps in. Then over time, you'll kind of and I feel like now I'm starting to find my voice on stage. Mm. And I feel like as well, like when you do it, you're just going to naturally maybe pick up little things other people do as well. Yeah. It's fine. Mm-hmm. It's good to be inspired. Yeah, definitely. Um, but like, obviously, still be you and do your own thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being inspired by different people. Mm-hmm. I'm inspired by different people, like combined. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, in ter- in terms of that, like, who inspires you in comedy? Uh, Russell Peters definitely mm-hmm. the first one for me. First, that was my first inspiration into comedy. Uh, you know, Kevin Hart, just because like, like I don't, like, he's not the, you know, funniest comedian yeah. people say, but in my opinion, he's the he's the he's one of the best because he's not just great at stand up. Yeah, he's he's in the movies. He has a pr- fucking radio show. He does a podcast. Like, the list goes on. He's a producer, a director, everything. So, um. I, like I want to be like him. I want to do do the shit that he's trying. He's doing. It's not just like, just doing stand up, right? Yeah. Like I want to do it all. So, guys like that, you know, uh, Andrew Schultz, one of those guys, yeah, for me yeah. too. So, yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. The the work ethic of yeah, Kevin Hart's insane. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I still to this day, there's no one that works as hard as he does. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's been in the game for like thirty years or something like that. Mm-hmm. Some, 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 something crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So with so you make a lot of like with that like on terms like hustling and things like that. You make a lot of uh, online content. When like thinking of jokes, like how do you determine? Like what goes into like a skit and what is like maybe more of a, a stand up kind of joke? Um, uh, I I I I, ha- I have two folders in my phone. Mm-hmm. One's for stand up material and one's for sketch right ideas. Yeah. Um, and I've I've had the same two folders since 2014 when I started. I still have it's like fucking endless the list. Yeah. And yeah. Um. Uh, it just comes to me. I don't know. I could be walking down the street or in the shower or fucking eating food. And then all of a sudden, oh, man, that could be a funny bit. Or oh, that could be a funny video. Yeah. And then I'll write it in both folders, mm-hmm. like like separately. And then later on, I'll go back in when I am when I want to sit down and write. I'll be like, oh, like maybe this is better as a video. Mm-hmm. Or maybe this is better as a bit. And then that's how I kind of like decipher. And then I just try it. See where it goes. Mm-hmm. Some Most of the time it bombs. But the times it does well, it fucking does really well. And then you're like, oh, sick. I'm glad I wrote it down. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad I tried. Yeah, definitely. So when you have like a... How long does it take to kind of like from writing down an idea of like a sketch or something? How long is like the turnaround from the writing it down to like, you know, starting producing and making that that content? Honestly, uh, I maybe like... I don't know. I'll, I'll write it out. It'll take me like probably, let's say, tw- it depends on the type of video. Like yeah. it could be a very easy video where it's just like um, one word scenes or one lines. And then it's just like, I just have like 10 of them. And it takes me t- 10 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that's written, I, I batch them. I never f- write and then film right away. I always write every day. Mm-hmm. I have them saved, I banked, yeah. and then one day I'm like, all right, on this day I'm gonna film for three hours, mm-hmm. and I film these two, three, four videos, mm-hmm. bang them out, and then I go from there. But I always have stuff written, just in case. But just just to have a good have have a backlog, I think it's important. So yeah, yeah, and I guess if you have stuff that's over time as well, like you might be able to, you know you would just think of other things to add that already s- that s- idea that sketch you've written ages ago as well and be like oh actually now that i'm like you might feel ready now to actually make that video yeah exactly yeah. there's so many ideas i've had from like seven years ago five years ago two years ago and i'm like and i, I wrote it down and i'm like ah oh, like this is I, I don't know what to do with this i don't know how to make it funny but then i'll look at it now and be like oh i know how to make that funny now mm-hmm. and then i'll do it and then so that's the beauty of writing it in your folder yeah to have that's yeah that's really good advice as well because i i feel like i'm at a point where like i'm like okay i should start making like sketches and things but i it's funny with stand up i'm like okay like this is like i'll i can come up with heaps of ideas but then for sketches i'm like fuck i have no ideas (laughs) right now happens yeah yeah i mean it's fine i mean you have to just do like find ways that are are Mm -hmm. are gonna work for you Mm -hmm. um and just try shit. You never, you never know. You could do anything. You could fucking talk to the camera mm-hmm. about something for thirty seconds, and then maybe that's your thing. Or I don't know, like you do montage style cuts of like one liners or whatnot, or I don't know. Um, or if you do impersonations or accents, like like I do, like a lot. I I just I, it's a character, mm-hmm. so it's like I can get away with certain things by doing that. Or or if you just want to be yourself. And I don't know, riff on something or like rant about something. Do that. It's like there's so many uh, opportunities to just try sh- something, and you never know what's gonna hit. But all I know is that it's it, you have a better chance of it hitting if you're authentically being yourself along the way, because eventually the right people will find it. Mm-hmm. Nobody they'll, they'll resonate with with whatever you're putting out. Yeah, I guess that's the the good thing about online content too is that eventually it will find the right audience. Where eventually like stand up and things like that it's kind of like okay this is the audience i have right now and they might not be into this and that's why it's a bit harder to make jokes about like obscure like movies or something sure these people have probably not seen this but if you put that same joke online it'll find its 
Yeah, for sure. What you, yeah, exactly. You you can reach ten thousand people online with one small video, mm-hmm. but then two people might see it in person. If you're if, like you're not, how are you, it's, it's just like in in compare. You can't compare the two. So, um, making content is very valuable. Yeah, and it's honestly, it's frankly changed my life in a way. It's changed my career trajectory. It's like I wouldn't even be here if it weren't for my content. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be in Australia. It's like. You know, it's made me not only like money, but a lot of resources and connections with people. So, and I think that goes a long way. Mm-hmm. I'm not like, m- I'm not like making any money by by any means. Like I'm not fucking loaded or anything. It's just, mm-hmm. it's helped me a lot along the way to just keep going. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And is, is stand up like, so stand up's like your full time kind of gig now? I mean, yeah, everything yeah. I do is full time. Yeah, like yeah. It's like all together. I act as well. So I oh, yeah. I have an agent like I do I act like I I did a I was a I was a lead in a movie last year, in oh, an yeah. independent film yeah back home yeah and that's coming out actually in a couple months, um that's they're cool. gonna release it finally it's been actually fuck it's been two years, so, and I you know, I've been in commercials like I was in the boys on you know the boys yeah yeah, yeah yeah I was in that yeah oh sweet yeah so, not not for long it was one scene but still yeah <laughs> nonetheless but yeah I do that stuff too and then yeah, everything everything I want to do it all. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's where, like, I'm trying to, like, because I, like, have a digital media degree. So, like, I love, like, editing and things like that, too. Mm. So, I need to, like, utilize that into, like, what I'm already doing with the comedy. Yeah, yeah, that's sick. Too. Do you know how to edit? Yeah. Like, uh, high effects and shit? Like, uh, yeah, like, a, l- a little bit, yeah. I've done, like, a bit of motion graphics and stuff, Oh, too. cool. So, yeah, fucking use that to your advantage. Mm. There's so many people don't have that skill. But if you, you somehow can find the way to make it comedic or like use it to do comedy, that's that's brilliant. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah, sweet. It's one of those things where I'm like, I've been like saying for ages, like I'll do it. And yeah, yeah, but it's a, the, uh, words don't matter, man. If you don't fucking yeah. put in the work, you know. Yeah, exactly. You gotta take action. Yeah, but get after it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so what's the, I guess for you, like, what's the moment? Um, so far in your stand-up career that's like really stood out to you that like you're super proud of uh the fact that i've i've garnered like uh, such a following online Mm -hmm. but also the opportunities that have been given to me because of that so like like i i opened for gary v at vcon at his conference in 2022 yeah 2023 2022 Mm -hmm. um it was like his inaugural conference it was in minnesota in america and it was in a stadium in front of like four thousand people. Wow! And um, the beginning of the festival, like they were announcing Gary Vee to come on stage, and I came out as Gary Vee. Oh, and that's I did great. an impression of him on stage, yep. and like I met him beforehand and everything. And, like yep. they flew us out. It was amazing. It was sick. Um, and like that wouldn't have happened if I didn't just fucking put it out, you know? Yeah, content, yeah, definitely. Right. Yep. So content. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So that that's pretty much where it started, and um, and. That that's I'd say that's those are one of my proudest moments is yeah. shit like that yeah. and also like opening for Russell Peters in in a, in my hometown too. Oh wow, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. I had, I was in Toronto at Scotiabank Arena in front of sixteen thousand people. It was Jeez. crazy. Yeah, wow. I did ten <laughs> minutes. It was sick. It's one of the fucking best sets of my life. I felt amazing. Wow. Yes, yeah. that's, that's insane. And it's also like the it it speaks to like with the content thing. You never know who, who's gonna like who it's gonna reach. Yeah, like it's just crazy to reach Gary V, Nuts. and he was just like, I fucking love this, and that's how I, and I can imagine a lot so of I'm other saying. people and stuff found you as well. Was him, yeah. talking about it in his podcast and stuff like that too. Yeah, it's like it all one thing leads to, n- to the next, man. Like you never, mm. it's like that's what I'm saying. You're in Brisbane, Australia. Yeah, I, I was in Toronto, Canada. Like the fact that it reached you over here yeah. is crazy, and then now we're here. Like it's, it's wild, right? Yeah, yeah. So that means like anything's possible. If you can fucking see my content mm-hmm. and you're all the way here, then the the possibilities are endless. Yeah, definitely. So that's what I love about it. That's what I love about making content and getting a name out there and just finding your own audience because, yeah, it's just so valuable, especially for comedians. Mm-hmm. If you want to do comedy, you want to tour, fucking get an audience, Yeah, those people will support you and fucking come to your shows mm-hmm. and make your dream come true. So, yeah. That's sweet. So... I guess um, what's what's next for you? Like, I guess we've talked about like the the tour is like your big focus at the moment, in terms of like your comedy career and things like that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just doing that, and um, yeah, I, I'm working on like some other stuff for acting. Like, I want to, uh, you know, do my own movies eventually. So, yeah. just working on stuff like that, and um, yeah, man, just just connecting with people that are that that could potentially help me out in that world, or um, yeah, just just work we're working on a big sketch tour as well with me and a couple of my friends that I do that I collab with. Um, we're we're trying to do that in 2026. Mm-hmm. Um, like pretty much all our favorite, you know, cr- um, characters that people love mm-hmm. online, they'll see it on stage in real life, and that's what we're trying to like work on right now. So, yeah, oh, right. yeah, and then obviously my tour, my big stand-up tour, which will be like the, mm-hmm. it'll be like a big statement tour, I think. Um, uh, it's, it'll be a big one, but it'll be good, and I'm excited for it. And um, yeah, yeah, just, uh, whatever, whatever comes my way, man. I'm just just trying to work towards creating the best possible content the best material mm-hmm. work on my health a lot you know fucking all those things mm-hmm. yeah yeah awesome yeah and you have a few more dates in australia left as well don't yeah, you? yeah 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 uh brisbane july 12th actually i don't mm-hmm. know when you release this but um uh yeah brisbane july 12th perth august 17th melbourne july 21st but that just sold out so that was good yeah awesome. uh august 31st is sydney and that'll be the last solo show I do in Australia. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then until the, like, the next tour, like the next mm-hmm. two years after that, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Also, oh, you're leaving around August? No. Uh, well, I'll leave uh, in October. We have, we're October, leaving in October because yeah. um, I'm going to go back to Sydney to do the Sydney Fringe. Yeah. Just like, just like to jump on other people's shows, just get spots. Yeah. And that's like, that's why I've been doing it since the beginning. So, mm-hmm. yeah. It's pretty much like just getting reps. That's that's the theme of this. If, na- if yeah. you're naming this episode, it better be called reps. <laughs> reps. Put in the work. Put in the reps, baby. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Bro, you look like a fucking rock star, man. With look your like hair. A rock star. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you play music? Uh no. Oh. No. It, a lot of people either assume I play music or like I'm big into metal and stuff, but I don't. Yeah, really you look like music. a metalhead. Yeah. What kind? Of, what's your favorite bands? Uh, Parkway Drive. Parkway Drive. Parkway Drive. Oh, Parkway Drive. Mm-hmm. Never heard of them. What are some like famous ones that I would I would know, or like any ones uh, that you like? Iron Maiden. Okay, Maiden. Yeah. What yeah. about Slipknot? Love Slipknot. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I saw them last year. Right, okay. Okay. Cool. Do you listen to metal and stuff? Not really. I'm I'm I'm, I'm a drummer. Like I used to I used to be oh, a right. drummer. Like I wasn't a band and shit. So. Oh, I, we, But we didn't play like metal. It was more so like uh, punk rock and like stuff like that. But yeah, I'm 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 obviously into different types of types of music. So yeah, just like you look like a one of those you know metal heads. Fucking headbanging and shit. Is that you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's funny. At your show, you said I looked like Weird Al. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I actually have a shirt. Oh, I have that's a, funny. Uh, I have a f- I'll show it to you. But I have a photo with Weird Al. No way. And it like I look like his son. That's a, see. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and I was like, when you said, I was like, oh my fucking god. I love how no one understood that too. <laughs> <laughs> You're just staring at me like, yeah, I get that all the time, and everyone else is like, who the fuck is Weird Al? <laughs> like, how do you guys <laughs> not know Weird Al? Who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's, see, it's accurate. You see that shit? Yeah, when you said it, I was like, fuck, you nailed it. Fuck and I have yeah. a shirt of Weird Al. And people oh, are like, there you go. you got a, pic- a picture of yourself on there. There you go. Sweet ass. That's a good cunt. That's what doing the reps does. Doing the reps, mate. Fucking genuinely good cunt, mate. You know? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, uh, I guess to wrap things up, what's your worst bomb? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, Man, I... I, I I think I've told this to like everyone pretty much, but like, um, I'll never get tired of talking about it because it's so bad, but it was in my first year, I think, or second year. And I was doing an open mic in this attic. Mm -hmm. It was literally an attic. (laughs) Like it fit five people. Like it was short ceiling. Mm -hmm. The downstairs was like a mini bar. It was like creaky fucking stairs. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Rat infested probably. Mm -hmm. Um, the host was a fucking lunatic, just chaos. And it was my first time at this open mic. Um, it was a Tuesday night. I remember vividly because it was the, always the Tuesday night fucking. That was the spot everyone would go to. And it would be the longest open mic. It, it starts at 6 p.m., goes till 2 a.m. And <sighs> and like any, every comedian in the city would probably drop in at some point on that night every week. Um, I go early. Because, like, in my head, I'm like, if I go early, sign up in the first, like, 10, that's sick. That's solid. I can get up in the first 10 and go home or go to the next mic. 
I get there. I, I get there at 4 p.m. I'm the second person there. I literally start the list. You can start the list. Whoever's first starts the list in the bar, um, like the open mic list. I, I, I just go. I put myself like I'll go like third or fourth. Like, it's fine. I go to the next mic. I do two more, and I come back, and they're already uh, – they, they started. They were on the second person, and I'm, like, excited. I'm, like, fuck yeah. Like, I'm up next pretty much. And I, I, I go to the host. I'm like, hey, man, like, uh, my name's there. Like, I'm, I'm up soon, right? He's like, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to put a few people before you, but, like, yeah, just, like, wait around. This guy bumps me, like, puts seven other comedians before me, Jesus. right? And time goes by. Another hour goes by. Hour and a half goes by. I'm like, hey, man, like, am I next? Like, and, like I was supposed to be, like, fourth or something. And he's like, oh, sorry, man. Like, some other comics dropped in, and, like, I have to put them up before you. Kept doing that. For hours, it ha- kept happening. I kept waiting. Bro, I got on stage at, like, 1.10 a.m. By the time my name was called. 1.10. <sighs> I could have gone up at, like, 7 p.m., right? But I kept getting bumped, like, crazy. And because, e- like, each comic's doing, like, 10 to 12 minutes, too. Yep. So it takes up so much time. The host does, like, 20 minutes. Like, he's losing his mind. And then by that, by that point, there was one other comedian there. Mm-hmm. A drunk guy passed out and his dog. In the front, the host left. Now I finally go on stage. I look at the crowd. There's no crowd. <laughs> the, uh, the other comic also left. And that was literally me, a passed out drunk guy, yeah. and a fucking dog staring at me. Like, who the fuck is this guy? What the hell? Yeah, and I'm like, I'm trying to do like material, and no one's there to listen to. Mm. But I was like, fuck that. I'm here for five, seven minutes. I'm still gonna do my material. Yeah, I'll just do it. And I was so emotional. I was like, fuck this. Mm-hmm. I was like, whatever. I literally started doing st- like my bits in front of this dog, pretty much. Mm-hmm. That's it. And I, obviously, I was bombing in front of a dog. But what are you going to do? You got to take the L, man. You have to. These are the moments you got to push through. And I still went home. I cried. But I still mm-hmm. went home and I tried to get the next day. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. It's crazy that you started the list and you're probably the one that had to go put it in the bin. <laughs> Pretty much, I was like yeah, one of the last ones. Yeah, that's crazy. But like, th- yeah. that was the man. That was a grind, and like, I was too, like, competitive mm-hmm. and resilient to like give up. I was like, nah, fuck that. I'm still staying. Yeah, because like, I, r- I was dedicated, determined to get my spot. So, that's the difference, you know. Yeah, that's really good because I, up like for a long time, I was like, if it was like a you know one or two people in the crowd, and I'd like get really nervous, I would like cut my jokes. Oh. But now I'm like, I need to just fucking do the time. Just like, do it, man. Just do the full time that I've yeah. been allotted to. Like, rather than be like, oh, let's get fucking over and done with. Yeah. Like, cause it's exactly. Like, and it's also like a respect thing, too, because it's like those two people still showed up to watch. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be cutting sure. my you have material. To. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's two people or 200, like, yep. just do it like you are performing in a stadium. Mm-hmm. Fucking sell that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's number one advice I got that helps me. Like, sell your jokes like it's the best thing they've ever heard in their life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sweet. Because it, it is that, like, you know, at the end of the day, it's a stage and a microphone that you're getting to practice with. and Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't hurt. It never hurts mm-hmm. to just go on stage and do your act. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trial and error. You got to experiment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sweet. Well, that about wraps it up. Cool. Cool. Thank you so Hell much for yeah. coming on. Of course. Thanks for having me, man. Um, this is a, it was the one camera, right? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was wondering if there's like a hidden one somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it has seven angles, but this is the only one you see. Uh, yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate that. Too easy. T- too easy. Too easy. Yeah. Too easy, mate. Too easy. Yeah, you. Yeah, mate. Yeah, Heap, fucking hell. heaps. <laughs> heaps of fucking podcasts, mate. Yeah. No. No. That's one we get no worries, bro. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Too easy, mate. Yeah. Nah. No worries, can't. Yeah, fucking, I don't can't fucking oath, oath, yeah, oath, oath. fucking oath, fucking oath, fucking oath, can't, yeah, shit, yeah, man, you got a ciggy, mate, you got a fucking, uh, it's dodgy, oh, oh, she's fucking dodgy, mate. Yeah, nah, mate. Yeah, nah. Shit's fucked. Shit's fucked. Yeah, get fucked. <laughs> yeah, uh, g- good on ya, good on ya. Get a dog up on ya. Get a dog up on ya. Is that a word? Uh, dog, get, get the dog, I think. Get the word. dog? Yeah, I think get the dog and there's probably... Yeah, I don't know. It's What you're sa- saying sounds like Fuck it, man. It sounds that. Aussie, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the dog <laughs> on you, mate. Doggo. <laughs> Fucking doggo. <laughs>
Bottolo. We're gonna we're gonna head down to the Bottolo later. All right. Trolley. The trolley. Yeah. Take the tram down by the fucking river. Wheelie bin. Wheelie bin. What the fuck is that? It's just a tr- like just the bins we have at like oh, trash. Oh, wheelie can. bin. Yeah, that's yeah, funny. Bin, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a not- yeah. Fuck. So the yeah. mate, we're gonna fucking hit the servo. Gotta get some petrol. Servo. 